Secret Celebrity MasterChef. We've got 16 celebs all hoping to show off their cooking talent. I am ready to rumble. They've proved themselves in their own profession. Now let's see if they can cut it in the kitchen. My aim was to at least be a finalist. That's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> I would hate to go home today with a passion. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These four celebrities are competing to become MasterChef champion. My performance so far has been up and down, but I'm really determined today to fight. Of course, I like to stay in longer. I think it's a good kick at the backside. You know, we'll carry on cooking. No more takeaways. Seven weekends, maybe. I'm very much enjoying the competition. It's a way of me saying, you know, this is what I'm about when it comes to food. I was brought up having to win. So to go home at the first hurdle, I would um, consider that a failure. Joe's back in the fight and we are now going to send our four off to a professional kitchen. Their first chance to understand what it's like on the other side of the restaurant door. Today, the celebrities are being sent out in pairs to two London restaurants. Feeling a mixture of nerves and excitement. When I'm outside my comfort zone, the nerves can get on top of me, so I'm hoping to keep the nerves at bay. Here in the Chef Whites again. Hopefully we we'll can, can do the whites justice today. I think my biggest fear is that the standard is going to be high. The fact people are paying for the food, that definitely makes it a lot more scarier. This is like jumping into deep water, you know, I missed it yesterday and, you know, somebody with my experience going into a top restaurant, that is nerve wracking. Les and Matthew are heading to Boysdale in Canary Wharf, a restaurant renowned for its traditional Scottish cuisine. They will be working under the supervision of head chef Andy Rose. 200 covers for lunch. We've got absolutely loads to do today, so um, we better get started. Yeah, absolutely. better. Absolutely. Comedian Les is in charge of the roasted loin of wild venison, served with garlic snails, morels, mushroom puree, and finished with marinated Douglas fir and a venison gravy. We're cooking the venison today in a water bath. Right. 12 minutes. Yeah. Then we're finishing in the pan with all the garnish. OK. We use your timer or we use the clock over there. OK. Right. right. Yeah. OK. So that's 12 minutes from now. Exactly. Well, probably 11 and a half because you've been in there for today. Yeah. OK. Got it. OK. Now, the venison today is with snails and Douglas fir. Douglas fir is this. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Right. And then we have some snails. Yeah. OK. OK. Want it very hot pan, you want it really smoky. Okay. Okay, now the venison is cooked. Okay. We're gonna do about 30 seconds on each side, right, okay? okay? So it's just starting to get a, some caramelization. Doesn't take long at all. I just baste it. Like I said, it's cooked, we don't need to do anything else. Not our morels. And three of our snails. We're just warming these up. We don't want to overcook them, snails no. be all rubbery. Morels, beautiful at the moment. Okay. Yep. Fresh and chopped parsley. Let's play it up. Again, this is where we sort of slow down in a way. Yeah. We don't want to rush the plating. No, the presentation. OK. Take our venison. Arrange it around the spinach. And finish it with a little bit of our Douglas fir. Okay. All right. That's how I expect it from all the right, boys. Brilliant. That's how I expect it from you. OK, well, thanks. thanks. 
My worry would be if I got four venison at one time, you know, making sure they're all ready at the time, but it's just not panicking when it comes to the Absolutely. presentation, isn't exactly it? Exactly that, yeah. exactly that. Now, if you go like that, it's going to be off centre. So okay. Put it in. Right, move it. try another plate? Off. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, use your arm. Okay. Here we go, and one more. Using the spoon to make yeah, that. Okay, okay. Yeah. all right, yeah. There's a lot to get right. Hopefully, there's not a lot that can go wrong, you know, as long as I remember how long the venison's been in the bath. Keep watching the clock, watch the timer, and make sure my timings are right. That's all the ingredients that were separated for you this morning. Yep. Cricketer Matthew has been put in charge of the organic lamb cutlets topped with wild garlic mousse, served with a potato galette and a classic reform sauce made with port and red currant jelly. You don't need too much heat here, otherwise they'll explode. We're going to take two of our cutlets, and it's wrapped in a little bit of creponet to hold it all together. Now, the creponet will explode if we overheat this. So all we're doing is really sealing it in, OK? A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. You see that sort of all melted yep. together, lovely? It's all we want, OK? If these start going a little bit off colour or distaste, we've got to start again. Yep. So, Sorry. you know, every plate has to be... Bob on. Absolutely. Eight minutes, exactly. Have I got a stopwatch or a timer? You've got to count and look at the clock when you're putting stuff in. But if I plunk it on yeah. and then write it down 18 minutes, so I know when that goes to 18, I take it out, then write 26, I know when 26... If, however, it how, whatever works with you, Matthew. I mean, oh, at the end of the day, I would just, just look write at it down. And, yeah. OK. Eight and three. All right. Yep. So, eight minutes, yeah. lamb is ready. Nice three minutes to rest. It's all about timing today. While the meat's resting, I can start plating up, and by the time I've finished plating up, the meat's rested yeah. three minutes. We'll, we'll plate once the meat's rested. Okay. Once the plate, so I, I don't plate up while the meat's resting. Absolutely, no. no. Okay. Lovely warm gallet. Try and keep things central. That's it. OK? Lovely, it looks beautiful. So, Matthew, it's reasonably straightforward, but it is all about timing, as you've seen. Good luck. Thank you very much, Chef. Jobs are good. It's all about the timings, as I said. And my wife knows that timing is not my strong suit. I'm very much a live by the seat of my pants and not being that organised. Hence, making notes. Hopefully, something's going to sink in and I can um, do the dish justice. Across town, Speech and Joe have arrived at Spice Market, a restaurant inspired by the street food of Southeast Asia, in the heart of London's Chinatown. Good morning, Speech. Good morning. Morning, Joe. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to Spice Market. My name's Peter Lloyd, I'm the executive chef here. I've got a very busy lunch service today, 60 to 80 covers. So a real challenge for the pair of you. So let's crack on. OK, follow me. Boxer Joe's dish is grilled ribeye steak in a soy marinade served with garlic and sesame wilted bok choy and a coriander dressing. So, Joe, have you cooked steak before? Yeah, I've cooked steak, but not with uh, these ingredients. So... And for 80 people at the same time? Of course not. <laughs> OK, all different degrees, medium rare, well done. They're all going to be coming through on your order, so you're going to have a lot to think about yeah. during service. I'll do my best. We're going to be brushing it constantly with this marinade. OK? Sounds good. Now, when we turn it over, it's going to give us a beautiful yeah. cross bar yeah. mark, yeah. OK? Yeah. As soon as we've turned it over, I want you basting it again. You can see there we've That's got good. that beautiful bar mark, OK? I don't want to see tram lines, I want to see crisscross. Quite confusing. I want you to marinate each steak twice on okay. both sides, OK? Yeah. Oh, it smells good. I'm hungry. I want them to rest for at least two to three minutes, OK? It makes it much more um, tender for when the customer's going to eat okay. it. OK. Good. It's a lot to take in, you know, obviously. It's, it's not just about getting the steak right. It's also about the, making sure it's presented well on the plate, you know, and uh, looking pretty. If I'm cooking at home, even if something's, like, really nice, I'll just slap it on the plate. <laughs> and then we just want a nice little line of the bok choy. I want you to cut the steak into slices, put it onto the plate, like so. I just want a nice line going straight down the middle, 
the main bit that you could get wrong is not cooking that steak properly. Yes. You need to make sure that it's cooked to the way the guest wants it. If they don't like it, they'll send it back. So there's a lot of pressure on you for today. OK. Rapper Speech will be in charge of the Nonya seafood laxa, served with scallop and gulf shrimp, finished with a coconut foam. So are you familiar with this type of cuisine? I do like as noodle-based soup, but I've never done this. I don't think I've eaten this particular dish before. We're certainly starting with a complex one, then, if this is going to be your first one. So it's going to be a real challenge for you today. OK. So this is a hand-caught diver scallop. We've got all of these to prepare today. You prise the shell open. Using the knife, you're going to scrape down to reveal where the scallop is. OK? And then we can open the scallop and then just pull up and around. And that is what I want ready for the laxa. So you've got 20 of these to prepare. I'm trusting you to do this. <laughs> Again, we've left a little bit of the scallop on there, OK? We've got a little bit of work to do. Yeah. OK? Be confident when you do it. Don't hesitate. Just up and around. Yeah, my arms are shaking. All or nothing. Look at that. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> so with the fish, we've got some halibut. We've got the diver scallop that you prepared and a tiger prawn. OK? Don't shake the pan to start off with, cos I want to get some caramelisation on there. While that fish is cooking, you're going to be heating up your laxa broth, OK? Yeah. Noodles are going to go into the boiling water. Then I want you to put that in the oven, and then that's going to cook for about a minute. Pour over the laxa. OK, then we're going to put in our fish, our scallop, our halibut and our prawn, like so. OK, we've got some mint, some Thai basil, some coriander, and then coconut foam. And then we're just going to finish off like so. Looks great. That's exactly what I need you to recreate for lunch service. It's going to be quite straightforward when we do one, but when it comes to doing service and you're hearing all of the commotion that's going on, you've got three and then you've got four, it's going to be all about your coordination, OK? I'm starting to get a little bit nervous now, but I think if I stick to those rules and get the things right in the, in the right order, I'll be all right. Nice. That's beautiful, huh? mm. Nice and sweet. Mm. It's midday and over at Canary Wharf, for Les and Matthew, it's time for service. OK, listen up. Two venison and three lamb. Three lamb, chef. How long do you both need, please? It's just you two guys. Five minutes, chef. What about you, Matt? Um, five minutes, chef. Brilliant. Five minutes, everyone, on the pass. It's crucial that Les's venison and Matthew's lamb dishes are ready at the same time. OK, guys, you've got two minutes left. Yes, Chef! OK, you gave me five. Yeah. OK, I want everything in the past, just you two. Um, one minute, Les. Come on. One minute? Yeah, but... Matthew's yes, nearly here. You did say five. Matthew's here, Les. Come on, let's go. OK, it's your first check. I've got nothing here. Not good enough. Come on. It's going to be another five minutes, sorry. Come on, Les. This is all going to be ruined. Sorry, Chef. Quick, 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 quick. Come on, Les. We're well behind now. We're going to okay, have to play okay, this table sorry. once again, yeah? And you said five minutes to me. I know, sorry. It's now ten. We're still not done. Right. OK. Come on, let's go. Over here. Keep it nice and central. Come on, Les, you've got to push it yeah, right now. Coming, I'm coming. All right. That's too much sauce. We have to replay. No, OK. OK, go. All right, come on, we've got to keep... It's okay. really, really slow, eh? Yeah. Well, you could tell it hadn't been done by a chef. However, the, the meat itself was cooked absolutely perfectly. It's quite tough. It's just the rush of it and then trying to get the presentation. It's so hard. Look at me, I'm sweating like a stuck pig.
Over in Chinatown, service is about to start for Speech and Joe. OK, boys and girls, are we ready? Check on one laxo, one ribeye. Well done. Yes, chef. OK, let's make sure we get these first ones right. If we get it wrong now, it will get worse later. Joe today, he's going to have a lot of steaks coming on at the same time. He's got to think about all of those different cooking degrees. It's going to be key that he gets that right. This is well done. It's going to take a good 10 to 12 minutes, OK? OK, yeah. Speech has got a lot of different components going into her dish. She's got to be cooking three different types of fish, reheating the noodles. There's a lot more going on there for her to think about. Just be a little bit more delicate when you take that fish out. I don't want to see it break up on you, OK? Nice colour on the fish, beautiful presentation. Keep them like that for the rest of the service. You're going to do a great job, OK? Yes, Chef. It feels good. Chef said it looked good. So, uh, I've just got to keep it like that. It's only the start of service, but she's showing really good signs in the beginning. So, how long for your ribeye now? I think about two minutes. Two minutes, yeah? New order, three ribeye, medium. Yes? Joe? No. So yes, 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 yeah. no, Chef. Get the marinade on that beef first, please. Yeah, put loads on. Loads on there. No, no, Joe, not on the one that's cooked, the ones that are on the stove. Oh, sorry. Joe, let's yeah. make sure that bok choy is a nice line. OK, safe to go. OK, service, please. OK, ribeye, well done, 94. Waiting for all together three ribeye and two laksa. Yeah, yes, sir. OK, good girl. Two at the same time, huh? Great job, speech. is really good. Thank you, Chef. I ordered the laksa. Very rich flavour. I enjoyed it very much. Come on, man. We've got butter melting on the pass. Chopping board's all a mess. How are those three ribeyes cooked? Uh, they're nearly done. No. I'm asking you, how are they cooked? Do you remember? Medium. Medium, yeah? Medium. We need to move on these ribeyes, please. They've been on a little while now. Customers are waiting. OK, ready to go. Three yes, medium steaks. Happy with those, Joe? Yes, do the best of that. Not a trick question. Yes, so happy. OK, service. Back at Canary Wharf, Les has more orders than he can handle. Can you order one oyster? 76 is away. Four venison. Can I have a time, yes, please? Yes, Can I have a time? Is this from start? No. Oh, um, these are these this four you've got six in. Six minutes. This time, Les, yeah. six minutes, not longer. Okay. While Matthew continues to impress. Yes, yeah, chef. Matthew, the lamb is superb. Well done. Really good. Thank you, chef. The atmosphere has gone from nice, calm, banter friendly to frantic. You order one venison on order. Yes, chef. Let's get one more in. All right, Les, listen, we're banging it now. I've got six coming up. Right, OK. We've got two more in order. Les is now juggling eight orders of venison. OK, Les, three minutes left, mate. Three minutes left. OK. I'm going to start plating soon. Come on, come on. I think I need a hand, Chef. OK, Ben, could you come and give uh, Les a hand, please? Right. Can I get a plate, please? A new plate. OK, OK, right, OK. Thank you, Chef. OK, all right. OK, right, right, thank you. Uh, it's a bit of a disaster, yeah? Yeah, I know. All right. That was tough. It all came at once. I was thinking, oh, we'll, we'll get two out, then we'll have another four, 12 okay, minutes later. Up, no starters. Two all... lamb, one venison. Away when ready. New order. I want in six minutes one venison, two lamb. Right, one venison. All right. That's going to be the last one of the service. Yes, chef. 
three minutes. Right. Here you go, Chef. Very good. Uh, Matthew. Yes, yeah, Chef. Really good service today from you. Cheers. Les, we're nearly there. Come on, you've got one plate to do. OK, plate. Let's make this one count. Come on. It's much better, mate. Much better, much better, much better. Right, let's sauce it. We can send it. Come on. Much better. OK, Les. <laughs> Again. All right. But not one plate made it today on time. Really? Not okay. one plate. Yes. All right, go. OK, guys, thanks very much. Service is over. Thanks, Chef. It's the first time in a professional kitchen, and again, we're, we're doing some big numbers down here, so... Yeah, big wake-up call. I think Les panicked today. He certainly did get slammed at one point, behind on every table. But saying that, everything was cooked perfectly. This is a steep learning curve, and that was the steepest part of the hill that I've been on. I thought Matthew did a great job. He's been composed all day, he's been writing notes. I think his timing was good, everything was spot on, I didn't have to get involved. Really enjoyed today, I think I've learned a lot of valuable lessons and I'm ready for the next challenge. Back in Chinatown, the restaurant is at capacity. We're reaching peak now of lunch, you're going to start getting a lot more orders coming on now. That was your warm-up, this is the real deal now, yes? Yes, Chef. Joe! Yes, yeah, Chef, thanks, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening? I don't know what's happening. You're giving me now one medium rare. Yeah. Then, after that, you've got two mediums and one more medium rare. That's four steaks. Yes? Yes, Ray. So good. He's not listening. He's not paying attention to when I'm calling. If he doesn't listen, he's going to go down. So we've got to keep an eye on him. OK, steak. Yeah, Joe, 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 Joe. Just falling apart. No, it's not that. Look, it's not cooked. OK, it's too rare, my friend. We're going to have to get another one on. We can't use that. OK. It's already sliced. Once you make that first cut, you've got to make that call. OK, so... What do I think? We've already waited 10 minutes for this. We now need to wait for another one to get put on. I need to get that one out first for that customer, OK? OK. I don't think I'm impressing him at the moment, though. No, I find it very difficult to remember all, everything at the same time. I think it's just getting on top of me, you know, all doing all this stuff. Speech. Yeah. You're doing a very, very good job. Everything's consistent. The food's coming out nice and hot. Your fish is perfectly cooked. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, Chef says I'm doing well, so it's good to hear. I've just got to keep it up now. Right, Joe, what are you giving me next? I'm not trying to be arrogant, but no, if you I don't answer that, me, then I don't know that you've heard me, yeah. and then you're not doing what I want you to do, yeah, OK? Sorry, Chef. OK, Joe, give me a time now on your two ribeyes. Well done. Two minutes, Chef. Two, Every time minutes. I ask you for a time, Joe, you say two minutes. Yeah, I need the truth. OK, maybe four. Is this next one medium rare? A medium. Well done. You're giving me two well done. Oh, OK. Um, I think, I'm not sure if there's well done, actually. No, it's not. OK, Joe, that's been on 20 minutes now for those two well done's. We should be seeing them now, yeah? Yep. As Joe struggles to cook his steaks to order, the customers are being kept waiting. <laughs> Joe, you're currently running at 28 minutes for two ribeyes. OK, two ribeyes. Joe, we got there in the end, yeah? Yeah. It was a struggle. OK, let's go. It's been over half an hour, OK? Send our apologies. Please don't tell me no more steaks, please. OK, last order. We've got one laxa, one ribeye. Yes, yes chef. chef. Okay, speech. I'm really impressed. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Chef. Maybe we're ready to go. Hallelujah, Joe, we <laughs> did it. Thank you, Chef. It makes such a difference when you get it right. It was a bit of a roller coaster. Joe really struggled. He was all over the place, lost his coordination. On what looks like quite a simple dish, that seemed to be a lot for him to kind of, you know, engage with. Yeah, today was really tough. I was a bit fussed, a bit confusing sometimes. What I've learned from today is uh, never work in the kitchen. <laughs> Overall, I think speech has impressed me the most. The fact that she kept her calm, which was the most important thing. Consistently, she delivered the better food. I have a newfound respect for chefs. It's hot in there. It's hot. It's a lot of pressure, but I think you can tell that 
they love it, you know? Um, the food is cooked out of love. Service may be over, but there's no let up for the celebrities, who now return to MasterChef headquarters. Cooking in the competition is so different from at home, but you have to rise to that challenge. The professional kitchen was an experience, something I've never done before. But the thing is, you know, I'm an ex-boxer, not a cook, you know, so at the end of the day, I think I put too much pressure on myself. I'm happy to be back in the MasterChef kitchen. I feel a lot more comfortable here. There's no chef shouting. This is like my second home at the moment. Right here, right now, I'm feeling quietly scared and nervous and also quietly confident that I've practised enough to get it right. Welcome back. You have had quite a few tests now. Quite a few lessons. We want to see progress. Now, it's time for a team challenge. Two teams, Joe and Speech. Les and Matthew. This is an invention test. From the set of ingredients you have in front of you, we would like one main course and one dessert. You can sing it, rap it, bat it, punch it. We don't care how you do it, just get us up some decent food. We're going to give you 10 minutes to think about it. Make us something delicious. Wow. <coughs> okay. We've got streaky bacon. We've got some quail's eggs. Yeah. Oh, nice. The ingredients include mussels, clams, razor clams, smoked haddock, long-stemmed broccoli, quail's eggs, strawberries, dark chocolate, cream cheese, and ginger biscuits. What are we doing for main course? What do you think? Smoked haddock. Yeah. Clams. Clams. Cook them off, put them in a fish pie. Yeah. This has got to be like a seafood thing. That's bongolier and they're clams. Yeah, clams, mussels. These are really nice. It's got, to, it's got to be with something else. Is there like rice or something? You can make pastries and you can make things like that. You can do whatever pasta, you want to do, yes. yeah? Yeah. Where's pasta? Yes. Where's we've pasta? Got, got to make the pasta? Flour, <laughs> eggs, you know, <laughs> things. <laughs> do you make pasta? Do you I, can, make I pasta? think so. I think I can make it. What can we serve the fish with? Decorate it nicely. Would you use the quail's eggs at all? I've done a recipe on using boiled eggs. Yeah. How long would you boil a quail egg for? It's, it's smaller than a... It's smaller, so, so yeah. a couple of minutes. What about dessert? I don't know, I ain't got a clue what dessert is. The cheese mixed with some caster sugar. We can caramelise the fruit. Mm. Oh, cheesecake. Can make a cheesecake. Okay. Let's do it, let's do a cheesecake look. You just want to make it easier for the dessert? No, cheesecake is actually easy. Is it? Yeah. You've had your ten minutes. You have one hour. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Try to start cleaning these things first, yeah? Um, no, let's do the pasta first. Let's do the pasta first. I'm not sure how much flour to how many eggs. This is what I can't remember. Um... We can just have a guess. When you're working in a team, you kind of feel like you have a common goal. You so put we've got flour down like that, yeah. and then you make a hole in the middle. Yeah. Like, I'm just not doing this for me, and we're doing it for us. Then you crack an egg in the middle, then you mix it all together, and you, you know... Knead it? Yeah. I've never used one of these before, though. <laughs> My grandfather was a chef for 50 years, you know. And my dad's a great cook. My uncle's good cook. And I'm just a lazy one. Oh, right. Joe, what's the plan today? There's some clams and mussels where I attempt to do like a, like a pasta or linguine vongole or frutta di mare, as they say. So we have seafood pasta and then for dessert? A strawberry cheesecake. Strawberry cheesecake. How are we going to make that cheesecake sexy, Speech? By having the strawberries on the top in a sexy pattern. So cheesecake with some strawberries? Yes. You're not looking that happy about this today, Speech? 
No, I'm OK. I'm cool. It's the, it's the, it's the South London face. It's kind of just set that way. But I'm happy inside. <laughs> How about you? You've been around the room with some very hard men. Anything as tough as this? Uh, I was outside my comfort zone a little bit. I'm not going to lie about that. But, you know, I do love food. And as I'm in the kitchen now, I actually feel quite embarrassed that I, know, I don't know how to do a dish that I've eaten for years and years. That's all right, because you, you, your granddad, although he's a good cook, I've heard he's a rubbish boxer. Exactly. That's so you're it. all right. <laughs> We don't need all that, probably need about a handful. Joe has been eating shellfish pasta all his life and he's having a go at making it himself. It's whether he can take the memories of eating and make it into a juicy dish. Please, two seconds. Do you need me to hold it, Joe? Yes, please. Right now, he has a sculpture over there that resembles something out of the Royal Academy. But otherwise, he's got himself some decent pasta. I think Speech, with all her talent and all her experience, is playing it a little safe. I'd like to see Speech just push it a little bit further. We're halfway. You've got 30 minutes left. Matthew. Yes. You need butter with yours, because there's, there's um, only one. I'll need a little bit. Big enough for a single portion fish pie? Uh, yeah, I would think yeah, so. Yeah, so we use that as your fish pie portions. Yeah, I like to challenge myself. I'll give 100% because you can't give any more than 100%, not even if you try. How's it going, Matthew? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Good. Yourself? Yeah, fine, I think. The challenges are very tough. I have a lot to prove, especially in the pudding area. In the previous mass catering challenge, Les messed up his bread and butter pudding, and John had to step in. Can you imagine that that food to be served to these guys? No way. What do you think we expect of you now, Liz? I think you expect us to improve quite a lot, basically. You know, I'm weirdly going for dessert again and hoping to put my bread and butter pudding disaster behind me and prove that I can cook a dessert. So I'm making soft fruit cheesecake and a raspberry and chocolate sauce on the side. Nice. Fish pie? Yes. How good can a fish pie be? We'll see. I think it should be very tasty and very delicious, but I'm sure you'll tell me when you taste it. And what are you going to serve with the fish pie, Matthew? I'm going to serve some buttered vegetables. Not a lot of time left? No, chef. And the cheesecake to be set? Yeah. You know they're doing a cheesecake as well? Yes, it is indeed a battle of the cheesecakes. He's doing a dessert. They say get back on your horse straight away if you fall off, didn't they? I mean, his bread and butter pudding was a disaster. Let's just hope his cheesecake's a lot better. Matthew, mashing away his potatoes, made his fish sauce, cooked some mussels and some clams. My big concern with the fish pie, the whole thing looks really gluggy. It's your last ten minutes. Try and get the pass on. Just the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. good. Oh, that looks good. Come on, son. Time's up. Okay. Nice. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Boom. Hey. <laughs> Speech and Joe's main is a seafood linguine made with clams, mussels, and bacon lardons in a cream sauce. I like the look of it, mate. I really do. You can't make a bowl of pasta look smart and elegant. It's yeah. not supposed to. But that's fine.
Your pasta's lovely. It's, it's just got a little bit of firmness to it. It's soft. A little bit of cream in there. It's coating everything. That sweet saltiness you get from shellfish that tastes of the sea. My only complaint is those clams are a little gritty. OK. Get a little bit of sandy texture in my teeth. But, Joe, stick with the Italian, cos you can do it. Thank you. I'll take that. Really well-made pasta. All the seafood's cooked very, very well. I like the addition of the splash of cream to coat the seafood. I think it's a really good dish. I'm very happy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I mean, it really is... This is your dish, really, isn't it? Inspiration from your family, with a bit of guidance and a, and a bit of confidence boosting from speech. Um, yeah, it's obviously she's a much better cook than myself, and I do take a bit of um, confidence from her, so that's great, so thank you. That's all right, Jay. For dessert, they've made a strawberry cheesecake served with a hazelnut praline and a strawberry coulis. He likes it. Do you know how I can tell he likes it? He starts to dance on one leg and wander around. He starts to do his dad dance when he starts to like... He does dad dancing. <laughs> Cowabunga. I just love a cheesecake. And all the flavours are there. You do have a buttery biscuit base. Also, the, the cream there is almost a tartness that, that's coming from it. But the whole thing is, is set on fire by that lovely strength of the strawberry coulis. Fabulous flavour you got in there. Thank you. It has about as much elegance and finesse as a car boot sale, but the textures are wonderful, the flavours are really good. Matthew and Les's main course is fish pie, served with mussels and clams, buttered leeks, long stem broccoli, and a tomato salsa. Right, let's go. Mr Wallace, what do you reckon? I'm, I'm really pleased because very few people realise how dangerous sprouting broccoli is. And you've managed to corner it off, keep it fenced in, because you don't want that running all over the plate, spoiling it. So, well done, Matthew. <laughs> OK, let's get stuck in. The flavours are really good. Smoky haddock, the saltiness coming from the clams. I like the richness of the sauce with that smoky bacon running through it, and I like your well-seasoned potato across the top. I even like your little salsa with the cayenne pepper. It's quite hot and spicy to add something else to your fish pie. Flavours are brilliant, the textures are a bit mushy. Whoa, I really like it. I really, really like that, and the texture's absolutely fine with me. Love the flavours in there, really like the saltiness of the seafood, and really like the smoky flavour you've got with the haddock as well. Job well done. I'd, I'd scoff that, Matthew. Thank you. To follow, they've made a strawberry cheesecake served with a raspberry compote, hazelnut dust, and a chocolate and hazelnut sauce. Les, well done, mate. I'm, I'm so pleased for you. It's the best thing you cooked in the competition. Your cheesecake, I think, is fabulous. Strawberry flavour with the almost sour cream. Your little compote there, keeping some of the raspberries whole in a syrup, is lovely. That's delightful. I'm an happy boy, Les. Thank you. I love the little stewed raspberries. I like your chocolate sauce. I think your cheesecake's made really, really well. Not a fault to be found, Les. <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done, you two. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Well done, all of you. Now you take a break, and when you come back, you'll be cooking your own food. Off you go. Well, well done, boys and girls. Oh, we've learned something. <laughs> I am really pleased because in invention test we had four good dishes. I'm particularly pleased for Joe, who presented a stunningly good pasta dish. John, Italian is obviously the way for Joe to go. Whatever you do in life, it's always nice to get nice, good comments, you know. I'm used to getting comments in fighting, but I've never really had that many good comments or positive comments when it comes to me cooking. Speech's cheesecake was very tasty, but it really wasn't that elegant. But, John, it's our own food next, and we know what a class actually can be. I think my confidence has been knocked a bit just because I kind of got used to Greg and Jog saying nice things. I guess it's a reality check, you know. There's still work to do and it's still a competition. As for Les's cheesecake, I am really surprised and very, very pleased indeed. Well done, Les, for finally getting a dessert out, and a good dessert as well. well that's good news for the competition, cos he's now up for it. To have Greg, who loves his puddings, love my pudding, was just fantastic. And, and John as well, he said it was well presented, and I think he said faultless. So I can't wish for better than that. That's fantastic.
Matthew's a Yorkshire cricketer, and I don't want to stereotype anyone there, but he gave us a good, hearty dish, and I really enjoyed his fish pie. I think that challenge over the whole went very well. We all got very positive comments, so it's even Stevens going into the, to the final hurdle. These celebrities have faced some extreme challenges. Now only one test stands between them and a place in the quarter final. I'll tell you what, the next round is their own dishes. So anything could happen in this competition, John, anything. I need to show that I know what I'm doing and that I can present it and that it is perfectly cooked. No challenge at all, is there? Well, I need to show that John and Greg next challenge, you know, is just, um, you know, I can cook. I need to produce a plate of food that looks good, doesn't look like a car crash, and tastes banging. Knowing that somebody's going home, you don't have a clue who it is. You don't want the stigma to be kicked off now, and I really do want to progress. This is the first time we get to see the cook you really are. The food that you love, the food you practised, so we've got high expectations. One dish, one hour, at the end of this, one of you's going home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Today I'm cooking a family recipe. I've cooked it a few times over the last few weeks. My children have been pretty happy with it, they've eaten it. I've inspired it out. So hopefully bring it together, you know. <laughs> Joe, tell yeah. us what you're going to cook for us now. It's a sort of chicken cacciatore style with tomatoes, uh, a bit of red wine, red peppers. So hopefully it'll be all right. <laughs> you like, Joe, to use the word hopefully. There's lots yeah. of hopefully. What's this all about hopefully? I don't know. Yeah, when we're talking about hopefully, it's going to be good. Hopefully it's going to be good, man. What is it that you particularly like about this dish? I just like the taste of it. That'll do. <laughs> what do your kids think about you being on? Master chef, mate. Yeah, well, my one boy, well, he's saying, Dad, I'm a better cook than you are, and he's only eating. <laughs> so your son who's 18 reckons he's a better cook than you? Yeah. So you've got to prove a point to him, don't oh, you? Oh, of course I've got to prove a point, yeah. Of course I've got to prove a point. And deliver a knockout blow? Hopefully. Joe's got about 400 chicken legs covered in three tonnes of sauce including peppers and capers and onions and tomatoes and all sorts of wonderful things. It smells wonderful. How's he going to make it look beautiful? He's a brave man, our Les. <laughs> Les, another dessert. Another dessert, yeah, <laughs> and quite an ambitious one as well. What are, you, what are you doing? A fondant with a cherry compote and cream, caster sugar and Greek yoghurt. So I have done it before, so I've just got to not let the nerves bubble over on top of the excitement. And how much do you now want to stay in this competition? I, I really, after that cheesecake round, I want to stay in. And we look forward to a fondant. Yes. A fondant fancy. Absolutely. A family fortunes fondant fancy. There you go. Wow. <laughs> what has happened to Liz? He's got one good cheesecake and the whole competition's come alive for him. But what he's attempting here is really complicated. A chocolate fondant that's got to be perfect, otherwise it's going to be a puddle. I'm nervous for him. I made three last night for my wife, mother-in-law and myself while we sat and watched a movie. I was watching, like, an expectant father uh, as they were in the oven, waiting for this baby to be born. If they're right, you jump up in the air and you feel really elated about it. But if there's no sign of gooey chocolate in the middle, then I'm finished. <laughs> Hear the word. The word is halfway. I'm excited about cooking my own food. 
If it's cooked from the heart, it should taste good. I'd like John and Greg to eat this and be like, speech, you're a dope chef. And that's what I'm going to call you from now on, dope chef. Yeah. <laughs> You've got an incredible array of different flavours here, Speech. What is your dish? It is a tamarind and molasses fillet of beef with buttered spinach and potato and celeriac mash. This is a real clash of cultures. Where, where has the inspiration for this come from? I've got British culture growing up with, uh, Jamaican culture, and also from South London, a lot of other cultures as well. Sure. You obviously love to cook. What is this competition starting to mean to you? I think this competition is, like, I feel like I'm supposed to be here. Do you think you've got a, a little hidden talent that you didn't know about speech? I think it's a talent. I kind of know about it. Hmm. Oh, speech is right out there with some of the flavours she's playing with here. She's got beef, but she's got tamarind, she's got chilli, she's got jam on the side. Now, I've never had beef and jam, John, so it's a culinary mystery tour. She wants elegance, she wants sophistication, but she wants to stay true to the flavours of the Caribbean. Brilliant. You've got 20 minutes left. You might see that I laugh and joke and everything else, but crunch time and when it's time to perform, I get on and do it. I am quite serious. I want to win. Matthew, as you go further and further in this competition, the more and more intense you become. I'm a serious character when I have to be, and I need to be now, so I'm intense. I quite like the attitude. Thank you. What are you cooking today? A pork fillet. Um, crusted with herbs, poached, with a black pudding mass, with baby vegetables, and a beetroot and apple balsamic reduction. You really are going for it, Matthew, aren't you? It's a little bit of a challenge, but hopefully I'll be able to put it out within the hour. How much do you now want to stay in this competition? I'd love to stay in this competition. I want to learn, I want to progress, and I, I want to eat good food. And I really want to be able to cook it as well. What do you want to demonstrate now? Uh, I want to demonstrate how rude I can be and tell you what to go away so I can absolutely concentrate on my cooking, if I'm being honest. right -o, big man. <laughs> One of the best answers I ever had. <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Good Thank luck. You. Cheers. We're off. Matthew is really pushing himself. He is cooking herbed pork. He is making black pudding mash, beetroot with balsamic vinegar. John, that is a lot of work in one hour, and it's lots of processes. This guy is really going for it. I have just begun to realise how ambitious Matthew really is and how competitive. I just hope he hasn't bitten off more than he can chew. You have just five minutes. Time's up. Joe has made chicken cacciatore with smoked bacon, capers and olives, served with parsley buttered potatoes. Joe, I've got to say, your food delivers like you do on the ring, with a massive punch. Very sweet with tomatoes, sharp with the capers and salty with the olives. I like the richness of your potatoes. I think it's a lovely tasting dish. It's not very pretty, but it tastes really good. That is typical of so many Italian dishes. It's yeah. lovely flavours of yeah. sweetness, smokiness, chilli heat garlic, the potatoes are soft, the chicken's soft, the vegetables are all falling apart. The issue is the simplicity of it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks. John said I packed the punch, you know. Um, pun intended was, uh, was a compliment for me. It's what we're staying. <laughs> in. 
Les has made a chocolate fondant topped with a quenelle of cream with Greek yogurt and a cherry and kirsch compote. Mate, you've done it. You've got a firm outside and a runny middle. Loads have failed where you've succeeded. Putting the yogurt in the cream to make it sour was a stroke of genius <laughs> because it offsets all that sweetness of the cocoa and the chocolate. You have made a very successful fondant. You've got really lovely sweet but sour cream. You've got soft cherries. Very bitter but sweet chocolate fondant with an oozy centre. I like it, I like it a lot, but I'd like it to be a bit more grown up. A bit more boozing with those cherries, make it a little bit more exciting, but it's a very, very good pudding. Thanks, Les. Thank you. He's done a lot with these puds towards the end. He has. John and Greg have nicknamed me Les Two Puds Dennis, so I'm quite happy with that. Speech's dish is a fillet of beef marinated in tamarind and molasses served on a bed of lime and butter spinach accompanied by potato and celeriac mash with a beef, garlic and thyme sauce. I love the colours. I like it a lot. I really like that speech. I think you've got some really good flavours going on there. I like the sweet nuttiness of celeriac in your mashed potato. I love the sweet sourness of your sauce, but I love the flavours you've got into that spinach. It's buttery and it's slightly spicy. What did you put in that spinach? Garlic, salt and lime juice. I love that. You've got some very interesting, different and very good flavours in there. What you deliver is something actually really elegant and really sophisticated. Your sauce is a wonder. I love that wonderful allspice flavour with thyme and richness coming through it. It's all really well balanced and it's really delicious and very, very Moorish. In fact, it's so good, if you look at the plate right now, between Greg and I, there's very little left. I'm feeling relieved um, that it's done. I think my dish worked in terms of taste and inventiveness. I think I, think I did well. Matthew has made poached herb pork fillet served on a black pudding and potato mash with baby vegetables and an apple and beetroot balsamic reduction. Unfortunately, all the sauces ran into each other as soon as you stuck it on the plate. I like the way you've cooked everything. I like the way you've cooked the pork. I like the way you've made the mashed potato. It's creamy, it's lump-free. I love the freshness and the crunch you've got on the vegetables. But the combination of balsamic vinegar, tarragon and beetroot is so strong, it's overpowering everything. Your tarragon is wonderful with the pork. Your black pudding and your mashed potato is lovely. Your beetroot, your apple and your balsamic is absolutely delicious. But all of them are too much. Thank you. Those flavours were too big. Those flavours are too big, but I'll tell you what, he's, he's got a nice little touch. Hopefully I've shown them enough that I've got ambition, I've got a lot of ideas, and hopefully it was good enough to, to move forward. Well, I'm really impressed by today's work. I mean, two really good rounds. The competition's really come alive. Unfortunately now, we've got a judging decision to make and, and one of you will be leaving us. We'll get you back in as soon as we can. Off you go. I've really enjoyed today. Some seriously good cooking when they did their own food. Very good. Some tasty food, some ambitious food, some colourful food, some unusual food. My favourite cook today is Speech. I love the beef, love the sauce that she'd made with tamarind. The flavour in the spinach, I, I, honestly, I thought it was delightful. I'm impressed by Speech today for two reasons. One, that her dish was quite surprising in the way it delivered. The other thing I quite liked was her teamwork. She pushed Joe and that team came out trumps. I would be good if I went home. I want to be in this for the long run. I think the universe has, has, uh, has told me this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what, Matthew's an ambitious cook. Johnny probably did three times as much work as any other contestant. Showed skills, showed ambition, showed that he actually likes big, bold flavours. His issue was there's too many flavours on a plate, too many big flavours. 
I play to win and I'm in it to win it, so I'll be absolutely gutted if I go out first. I was surprised by Joe, but as a team member today in here, he's done really well. He listened to what Speech had to say. He got some confidence. His food today has been really tasty, but his presentation's got a lot to be desired. But he's got a good palate and he knows what Italian food should taste like. Yeah, I like to stay master chef. It's like anything's a journey, you know. I know I have a good palate. I've given up opportunity, I, I can progress a lot. Les just all of a sudden found his feet, made a dessert, a cheesecake that really worked, and then went for a chocolate fondant that actually proved completely successful. I think actually Les has got a decent touch. I'd love to get to cook another day, but I've had a great time and I've learned so much and I feel I haven't made a show of myself, as my mum would have said. The issue we've got is they've all cooked very well today, all of them. We're going to send one of these cooks home. Which one? When you all cook well, it makes the judging extremely difficult. So well done. person leaving us. Is Joe. Joe, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks, Joe, very much. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I found the competition tough. I was a bit disappointed to go out first. But somebody got to go, and uh, it's me. Congratulations, guys, you are quarter finalists. <laughs> Keep it going. Keep it up. I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm finally beginning to believe in myself as a decent cook. I thought I'm a home cook, but I'm proving to be better than that, which is great. Knowing that I've got through gives me confidence. It makes me want to cement myself as a dope chef. Uh, uh, cool. Yeah, chuffed a bit. Obviously, you're through to the next round. Tomorrow's a knockout round, so no rest for the wicked. It's one hurdle um, overcome, um, another obstacle in the way, and hopefully you can perform tomorrow. <laughs> Next time, the battle for a place in the next round reaches its climax, as the celebrities face their toughest critics yet. I'm worried. Strawberries and prawns. Are you nuts? It's like edible wallpaper, it's just background. The whole thing is just a bit... <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> it's really lovely. The contestant leaving us is... 